Hey everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a tray set using these two hearts. And I am actually really excited to be using Maypring. And it is their two-tone collection mica powder set. And I've received the sample box in these sachets, but usually they come in little lovely boxes, little lovely tubs. And they are so 100% natural, eco-friendly and cosmetic graded, which I don't need it for cosmetic, but that's what they say here. So they're natural micas and these are 10 gram bags. So I've got all these gorgeous colours. Let me get them all out. So there's royal gold, charcoal black, Pacific blue, peach gold, olive gold. That's lovely. There is white pearl. Now let's turn these around. White pearl tropical blue, mermaid dust, wine red, and then copper. So my idea is to use three of these colors, and I'm really not sure which ones to use. Most of the time I do use white, love that copper. And these are color changing micas. So depending on the light, they're two tone. Um, I do like that greeny colour. Um, I'm wondering if that would go well with the copper. No, they're too similar. Um, black would go really well. I haven't done a black one in a while. And then royal gold, maybe not. The wine red with the copper. Oh. Oh, hang on. I'm really into my greens. Maybe it's spring coming up. So I'm going to use these three colours. And all the information will be down below in the description box. Plus information on where to get yours. And the colours here that I've used. So the idea is to create this one which I've put on Instagram last week, I think it was. So if you want to see how that one looks, here it is in Royal. I'm not going to put one of my crystal clusters on this time. It's going to be a little different because I'm using two moulds. And if you wait till patiently to the end of the video, you'll see what else I'm going to do with these. So let's get started. So today I'll be using craft resin. I've used it before in just one of my other videos. Um, link down below as well. And I'm going to be using a new cup. I've treated myself to a new cup. I say treat it, cost me one euro. But this is my old cup. I mean, literally, I am as ecological as I can be, and I use things until they're basically falling apart. Same with my cups to mix the actual colours in. I'll reuse them until, well, there's no more cup left. Same with my sticks. I do my best to use them as much as I can, regardless of the state of them, they're perfectly usable. So this one comes with a little handle, that's the only difference. I don't know, I thought it would be fun to, to try this. And uh, the, I have them in three different sizes. I'll go and show you. So depending on what I'm mixing, this is a little tip for you. If you're mixing just a little bit of resin, such as that much, there isn't any point putting it in a big cup like this because by the time you've poured it all out, you'll be wasting most of it that gets stuck on the side as you're pouring. Whereas if you're using something that's much more shallow, or more adapted to the actual quantity you need, you'll be saving a lot more resin and it's also easier to scrape out. So for today, I think this size will do fine. Always wear a mask. Please always wear a mask and open a window. That's mine being opened. It's literally just above the camera. And there are the birds. Can you hear them? Well, you'll hear more of them later on. 
So there's my mask. I'll be mixing this up. It's a 50-50 one-to-one um, -one ratio. So you, if I'm mixing 50 grams of that, I do 50 grams of that and I do it with a scale, a measuring scale, normal kitchen scale, uh, obviously dedicated to your resin painting because you really don't want resin all over your regular cooking scales. I'll do that and I'll be back. If I haven't mentioned this before, always, always wear gloves. Even if the resin is supposedly non-toxic, as this says, it really doesn't do any harm. And besides the fact, if you've got any pretty nails, um, well, you'll ruin them. So try your best to always wear gloves. So when it comes to measuring resin, I usually go by eye. If I have too much, I'll have a couple of other molds around, one of my cluster molds, and I'll use the remaining um, resin to put in those. I'm going to go 100 by 100 today. I'm literally going by feeling. I can always do a top coat if I don't find it's enough to go up to the top of the mould. But I'd rather not make too much or too little. And that can sometimes be difficult. So if I've got 101 there, I would absolutely do my best to have 101 when it comes to the second part of the resin. It really doesn't make too much of a difference, I've found, if it's a point over or two points over, as long as you're around the same quantities. If you go any more than that, you do risk your resin not curing and or um, not getting hard enough or, or staying sticky. This is the bit I just push in just so I'm, I get the exact, so I'm after 101, and there you go. That was a good save. And then you mix for three minutes. And this is how I do it. Okay, Google, set a timer for three minutes. Sure, three minutes, and we're starting now. We're very technological over here. So you've got to give this a good old whirl and I know you've seen this before but I do get asked a lot of questions on how to mix resin so I thought I'd integrate it into this video and if you're bored of this bit I will give you the timeline um, it, just down below in the description, no not in the description, just over here, a little text that will appear at the bottom of the screen and I will give you the timeline so you can fast forward. Right, that was a little bit in there and this is the way I do it I turn it around and I scrape the sides in and you've also got to scrape the bottom so I'm scraping the bottom into it and then I'm giving it a good old turn and I know this produces a lot of bubbles but we are going to zap it with the air gun so with a hot gun so I'd rather it's properly mixed than not so I'm giving it a good old whirl Scraping the bottom, scraping the sides, turning, and I will keep doing this until my lovely telephone tells me it's time's up and starts beeping at me. Right, there she is. Let me go and stop her. Okay, so that is the resin all mixed up. You can see there are a little bit of bubbles, but as I said, we'll get rid of those later with the air gun, the hot gun. So I'm going to place that on the side. I'm going to put my mask on now. So if I'm a little muffled, what I may do is come back in later as a voiceover and finish off. So I've got my cups and I've got a spoon and I will show you um, just about how much I put in. Depending on the depth of the colours that you want, if you want it a little bit more transparent, you could put a half a teaspoon. If you wanted it very dense and very opaque, you can put up to two. It depends on how much resin. Um, this particular brand gives you a PDF file giving you full explanation on the actual amounts that you need, the percentages that you need, depending if you're using resin or anything else.
So for the white, I will put one teaspoon of that because these cups are quite shallow. For the copper, I will do a half. And I'm going to have to use this, otherwise I will tint that with copper. And here I would say it's about a spoonful. I want it quite dense, the green. So that's a good spoonful. And I will have three separate spoons or uh, sticks to turn them around with. So my idea is to go for an abstract kind of piece. It's not my usual where I put some in the center, although I will be doing that but in different places and you'll see in a minute. So we're going for a nice abstract piece. I'm going to add all of my colors in there. That's the green. That's the white. And here is the copper. And I will always leave a little bit of clear. So I was really excited to receive these because I have seen them all around Instagram being used and they just looked absolutely gorgeous. And they are effectively very lush. They have a lovely sheen to them. And this is basically only one tablespoon, one teaspoon, or I think this was a half a teaspoon. You can see how dense that is already. And then this is the olive gold. And so as I said, they're all two-tone, so that they will change color, depending on the light, I guess. Sort of like a hologram. Excuse the noise outside, but I think there's someone doing his garden. And then there's my kids' school just behind. Oh, and there's the church bells. Oh, how lovely. But anyway. And there, look at that gorgeous colour. Oh, that is lush. That is stunning. Mix these really well. Really well. Turn them around. And scrape the sides because you may miss some. And as you can see, using a cup that's already been used when... All of the resins dried up is not a problem. It's much more ecological than using a fresh cup every single time. And some of my cups I've had for over, over a year. And they're still going strong. So try and be ecological when it comes to arty. Arty matters. Don't throw things away willy-nilly. So there we go. Give them all good stir. And we're going to get started. So now I have to decide which colours I want wear. I know that most of the time I put my whites in the old place, sort of in the middle, and then I'll do the green on the edge. So that's what I think I'll do, is I'll start like I usually do. I'll do the green on the edge. And the good thing about this is you don't have to have a specific plan. Most of the fun is just giving it a go. So I'm going to keep a little bit if I can, in case I decide I want some, say, in the middle. And that's what I'm going to do. I'll do one there. I'll do another there. And they don't have to be exactly the same, but it's nice if they kind of match. So there's the copper. And with the copper, because it's a strong colour, I'm going to just do a little like that and I've got my white and I will fill in any of those spaces in between it doesn't have to be completely filled because I will be adding the clear after and that will be doing all of those nice effects yeah that should do so and then I will add some clear And you can add it anywhere you want. You can add as much as you want or as little as you want. And I can already tell that the quantity of resin that I've made is not going to fill these right up to the top, but that's fine. Because that means then I can do a top coat if I wanted to. 
Right, so now I am going to take this and I'm going to spin it around a bit. Just a little, just to get those colours a little mixed in. All to the edges. Then I'll stop. Well, I'm not going to do too much, they so don't want a big mess, a big mushy mess. They just want it nice and blended and for all those effects to start happening. So all the way around. And when you feel it's kind of there, you can stop. Now there are little bits here that are clear. I'm not quite sure I want that, so what I will do is come in with just a little touch of the leftover green and just fill up the edges there. There's a, there's a little bit here. And I don't know if you can see, but these kind of those gorgeous effects have already started. So that's all I'm doing. And you can maybe play around with a couple of abstract shapes. And then what I'm going to do is get the heat gun. Just a regular old heat gun. And I'm going to pop the bubbles. And I'm not going to stay in one area too long because these are one of those cheap moulds that I spoke about in my previous video where I did those square set with a wine and a coaster set and I showed you that clearly too much heat wasn't very good for it oh gosh I'm going to have to bring you down here because these effects are lovely so if there's any patching up that you want to do or adding of any colour, this is the moment to do it. Just have fun. And you can go over the mould a bit, that little bit will dry and you can cr crack it off. I love this copper, it's absolutely beautiful. So I just want a little bit of this copper sort of going across like that. That's just me being fancy. And I'm going to wait a while. Now, this is really important to wait a while before you decide if anything needs anything more. And the reason for this is, is that resin mixed with these micas does take a while to create their effects. And if you rush into it, what will happen is, is that you might actually miss something really beautiful happening. So you do just want to leave it and you have to remember you've got a little working time when it comes to most resins. Check each manufacturer's information on that. But from experience you've got at least 10 minutes, definitely 10 minutes if not more. So it's worth just leaving it, coming in time to time, popping all the bubbles and I can see them still popping. Sorry about that. And, and just seeing what happens, because it really is quite beautiful. So there they are. They're almost a different look completely. And as you can see, that green has mostly taken over. But it's still got some lovely effects going on with the other colours. Some lacing. And that's all due to the mica. Okay, so it's the next morning. And this is how they have come out. I mean, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. There's quite a lot of sun today, so I'm not sure you can see it very well. Can you see all those stunning effects? I mean, that's one of the nicest effects I've ever had with mica powders. And look at that. I really hope you can see anything anything in this in this reflection so I'm going to unmold them they're not 100% cured yet because it's only been 24 hours um, but it's because I am going to embellish them and then add a top layer a top coat let me get rid of these so you can see how they've come out the back 
personally I never like the back of any of my coasters or my work. It's very rare that I like the back. Um, I always think the front is where all the magic happens. So here this one is a little mirror. Can you see that? Maybe if I close the blinds on my window a bit. There. Is that a little better? Absolutely gorgeous. So most of um, the white has sort of seeped in there. It looks great. It's blended in with the green there and it's just a little bit in the middle there. But as you can see this copper hasn't stayed very much. But as it turns out I prefer it like this, just a little touch. I prefer the predominance of the green. That gorgeous olive green. So what I'm going to do to embellish, let me put these over here for a moment, is yes, you've guessed it, I am going to use my glitter. And remember I did a little review on those a couple of videos back. Well these are the ones that I've chosen to go with them. I've chosen just two colours and these are olive green, of course, and then a holographic green. So these are the two greens and I'll put them in the description below as well. So if you're not sure on how to go about this and you're not sure where to put the glitters, you're afraid to make a mistake, the best thing to do is to draw yourself a template. Like I've done and this is the intention that I've got I'm going to use some glitter glue I am going to use some of this which is just a blue tape masking tape and this is the pattern I'm going for it's a very geomet geometric pattern and I will just alternate the colors between them so that's just one way you can do it if you're not quite sure and trace it around and then come up with an idea. Okay, let's get going. So it's just as simple as putting on your glue. And scraping it down, wiping it down. You can even use your fingers if you want it. Make sure there's enough on it. If there isn't enough, place some more on. And then it's time to sprinkle on. I'm going to be using the holographic one here. And you want to put more than you think you'll need. You, you'll always be able to put it back in the pot, any excess. So make sure you use more than you'll need. Sprinkle it on, be generous. And you don't really have to wait, just give it a good a little shake. You'll need a spare piece of paper, quite simple. Tap. The excess will come off if you've got any excess there that you want to salvage tap it off like this and then you'll be able to scoop this bit back in but because I'm going to be using it again later I will just move it to the side then what you can do is simply Peel this back and you can reuse this. Look at that lovely straight line. I think that already looks great. And imagine that with a nice top coat. So I am going to just brush off. this if there's any extra so I can reuse the tape just quickly. There's always a little bit of um, lost glitter but there's, there's not much you can do about that. And then I will do the other two sides. Now for this side here it's the one that goes there all the way along which will be if I put it in that same position there. So it's the one that goes along there. It's overlapping this area here. 
So I'll be using this freestyle. Or you could wait till that dries and then you can go over it. But if you put a piece of tape here on the top along, it will actually take that bit off. So what I might do is wait for that and I'll do this bit here. So let me go back to my... Okay. So then, on goes the glue. Be generous with the glue. I like using palette knives just because I'm used to it, but you can use anything. You can use a paintbrush, you can use your fingers. And then on goes the darker one, which is the olive green. Olive green. Going to use the thicker side. Oh, that's lovely green. My arm's not in the way. And this is how you put them back in. You'll open that. You'll take that. You'll fold it. And scoop it back in. It's that simple. They're quite similar colours, so you can reuse that paper. Look, there's just a couple of little glittery bits there. But it's not really a problem. Make sure you close these. And then tap, tap out again. It's a gorgeous green, isn't it? I don't know if you can see it from here. There. There it is, a little better in the light. Tape comes off. And so far, that looks really pretty. Now, there's a tiny bit there, I don't know if you can see. There on the edge. I actually like that, I'm going to leave it. Um, I'm going to leave that like that, just there, I know it just gives it a little touch. And if you wanted to do that on the other side, for example, you can always just paint it on. You can take some of the excess and wherever you think it could do with some, just put it on. Sometimes it does stick lightly to the, uh, to the resin, especially if it's not 100% cured there, just that little touch there. So I'm going to let that dry and then I will do the, the parallel line that runs across about there and that will look quite cute and modern. So I'll do the other one and I'll be back. Okay so these are done now and what I decided to do was add a little copper and I thought it went well with the other copper just to tie it all in and that's what it looks like. I think it's great. It's a little bit geometric. It's a little different and of course you can use any colours that you want. So I've kind of made them similar-ish, and I just think it looks really cool. Now there's lots of little bits that have left over, and that's actually going to be nice once you put the clear coat on, because it'll kind of give it a little sheen here and there. So the next step is the top coat, and then painting the sides, and putting some feet on them. Okay, so here's day two. Um, I've left them 48 hours to completely cure. They're going to come out of their moulds. And I think they look lovely. More than lovely, they're extremely sparkly. And that's the sides. You can see there's a little layer there of the uh, clear resin. That's the back. And what I am going to do is turn these into a two-tiered tray, layered tray. And I'm going to do that by using this. And you can find these uh, just on Amazon, just if you look up two-tiered, three-tiered layer cake stand, you'll find them. So what I need to do for that is drill a hole. But when I measured, because it's a heart shape, when I measured from there to there, it kind of gave me around there. 
So I'm just going to go by eye because I prefer it sort of on the perspective. So I will drill two holes there and there and then I will assemble this. So that's just a pilot hole. It's just to make sure that it doesn't crack the um, resin. Uh, as you can see, it's much thicker than this, so I will have to change to... Well, it just needs to be that thick there, so I will change to one of these um, larger drilling bits. And you can see how easy that is. It doesn't take very long. There's the other side. It's very clean, actually. There. So, let's assemble this. pretty tight. There's one. And then there's the second. Let's get that one properly. And that's when if I had two hands it would be much easier for me. Just to stop this spinning around. So let's do it that way. There you get the idea. So obviously I will be painting the sides. And then I have these little feet things here. They're actually little decorations. I pick them up in my local deco decorating furniture store. So I don't have the link for that. And I'm going to be placing three of them here. Whoops. One there, one there, and one there. And I'll be using some... Re use I'll be using some UV resin to stick that on and that will put some little feet if I could not drop them all. So I have another little tips and tricks for you when it comes to painting the sides. I discovered that you could make your own gilding fluid and the way I do this is so I take some glue, tiny drop of alcohol, pure alcohol, this is 99%. I mix it just a little with the powder and I'm going to use the copper since I have some copper in there. And I am going to also use some glue. Um, you can use any glue I would say, any sort of PVA glue, any strong glue. Um, I'll be using the glitter glue. And I will be mixing it all up and painting around the sides, and I'll show you how in a minute. So I'm just going to start with um, some of this powder. I've put two little pinches in there. A little bit of the alcohol ink just to um, mix it up. Well, not the alcohol ink, the pure alcohol. Just to loosen it. like that. If I'd add this straight away I'd worry that it would flake as it dried. So since I know that you can use sort of a regular clear glue and I know that it dries hard I'm going to mix the two very well and I'm going to apply this on the sides. So I've created now a copper gilding fluid gilding leaf. So let's see how this goes. 
You may need two coats. And that's just me tapping against my uh, camera pod, my tripod. So let's go all the way around. And as I said, you may need two coats, but so far it's going on well. And you also have to experiment with the amount of, of powder. I don't have a, an exact recipe, it all depends on how much you've put in, how much glue you've put in, and how much um, isopropyl you've put in. And I said I don't have a formula, but trial and error, and I'm sure you'll manage. So there, all the way around. Okay, well here's the final result, and um, I think it looks lovely. I think it's very elegant, and it's really not that hard to make. And if you don't have these moulds, you can easily uh, use some silicone cork and draw a um, heart with it, or something similar. It doesn't have to be hearts. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take good care of yourselves, have a great week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!